and welcome to the first video for a long time now we'll explain what's been happening to me within this video so we've just got a journey from Kalmar in Sweden to Ventspils here and further ado we'll get away <laughs> Um, yes, I am using a few mods. I will tell you what they are right now. So we are using Sissel's Route Advisor Workshop Undiscovered Route Road Finder Workshop DAF XG XG Plus Dashboard My Finbar that's on the workshop and Realistic Graphics Mod workshop again Turn and left. we are using a couple of z mods we're using is gps voice which you can get for free on this page are we using a daf euro 6 engine pack which is a paid mod um, After 100 yards, turn right. You see, my driving hasn't improved, but I have had turn right a bit of time away recently. Now, you've seen my Gambia trip videos, some of the last After ones I put up yards, about a year ago or so. You know, I got married in January 2022. Turn left to a lovely lady who was at the time working in Gambia. At the end of the last school year, she moved from the Gambia to Mauritania and I've recently come back from a month there with her. She's teaching English, the second language, to in two different schools. Monday and Tuesday she works with all the children, senior school children. And on the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, she works in different school, working with junior school pupils. And I've put a link to a few recommended channels where you put them. So, now there's Racing, which is a very good friend of mine. There's AY Amazing, excellent streamer. He was a real life American trucker, but finished for some reason and he streams some good content a couple of times a week there's Dan McNary or Goggles 56 as you may know him he streamer does a lot with mods he does a lot with his own skins and some tutorial videos with how to do different, different pieces within the console some driving tips etc etc and there is comfort by my wife her channel is some strong powerful messages from the bible and things like that i know i have religion but my wife and what i'd like you to go and do is go if you haven't already subscribed to those channels just go and subscribe to them, watch some videos, like and share them out as much as possible, especially the wife as she's trying to build started her own channel and she start and she wants to try and grow. She's doing she is a genuine pastor and prophetess. She does practice evangelism. I'm really with that, but don't worry, I won't go so much let's just go and like share and subscribe to her channel I know what's been happening very well so I got married in January 2022 so I've been married for a year although I'm not living my wife currently but plans may change in the future on that one I do communicate regularly online as much as we can so uh, in the middle of last year my mum was diagnosed with pancreatic carcinoma which is cancer of the pancreas 
if none of you are aware of that now <coughs> she went into hospital in October very ill removed and Go straight. unfortunately the cancer and so I couldn't do anything so unfortunately on the 7th of November she passed away just three days short of her 72nd birthday so I've had that loss to deal with with that which was hard work trying to sort everything out and things like that so when she got sorted out I uh, went to the wife and went to town with her there so I saw what's been happening so you know I flew from Manchester on a Sunday I know which was the cheapest flight I could get and so I live near with you so obviously I had to get to Manchester so a very good friend of mine took me to the railway station at Red Car where I boarded a train trains to Manchester Airport we arrived at the airport around about 11pm my flight was at 6am the following morning so got into the airport there, sat for a while, watched some videos and what have you. And then checked in from security, the airport, no bother quite easily. I then got a flight to Charles de Gaulle. I'm getting more used to the layout of Charles de Gaulle Airport. So I went there and then went to in security okay I had something to eat and drink in the airport which I know it's expensive but I couldn't long and then I boarded the flight I got to Novachuk which is capital of Mauritania is where I was going got to the airport there I had to the visa on entry, so I went, paid the fee, got the visa. Then I got a bit held up because they didn't recognise my wife's address. So eventually they went outside, got my wife's ID, residence permit, put it in, said, Is that your wife? I said, Yes. She did explain about the address that she'd recently moved within the last few days when we get getting there so I had her old address so she gave me the new one the stamp the visa for 30 days in the country which then we travelled by car a friend of hers with another friend took me from the airport to where my wife lived which took about 45 minutes to get to Address, so what the address we got, we had a nice where I went and bed because obviously traveling a long way, turn right, went to bed and changed my clothes, so we did that. Turn right, she did me something to eat, went to bed, and the next morning we got up. She was at work, so I could go with her. And um, obviously I couldn't go in the classroom with her, so I had to stay outside. Then she's like where in the playground. She's fair enough. I dropped to sleep. I got woke up by the director, which he won. He was fairly understanding with her. It happened in then we went to the shop get what we needed on the way back home 
I the woman got home that day, I sorted the things how to take for her, which were some new tops and some various other bits and, bits and pieces for her. Uh, some jewellery but not expensive jewellery and things like that Cross so we're happy with that exit. we the mail and that and then we just sat down watching television night on satellite what she had which there was a lot of channels in French the Mauritania and surrounding areas French speaking country uh, but there was some channels available in English like BC World News, CNN, Al Jazeera, uh, France News 24, and uh, there were some movie channels. So we watched some movies together. See, uh, that was the daily routine for the first two days there, and then on the Wednesday she was working with her younger children. She only works two hours from eight or ten. We finished there we went to one of the markets there. I think it was Senkum market. And that we met the friend who brought us because she has a cosmetic First stall exit. and things there and like that so I went chatting with this lady for a bit. And Exit then we ahead. went, obviously, routine. On the Thursday, it was my birthday, so we went out for dinner to Rotana, which is, hang on, no, it wasn't Rotana we went to, it was, been to Rotana a few times while I was there, eating chicken and beef. Cross and stuff. the rotary, second exit. But we went to a restaurant with the friend that picked us up from the Excellent airport and we had a nice meal there on my birthday I also don't know if I put any pictures up on Facebook or anything Cross so I had a cake Second exit. things like that which my wife had ordered for me which was very nice of her because it was my birthday on the Thursday I believe we were there yeah. and then Oh, the weekend we went to the big market. Keep right. And things like that. Now I did have a so and um, that we decided that over a weekend she was gonna take a bit of where well, we were gonna go to Morocco which Fire away, so I don't need a visa for Morocco, but my wife does. So we went to the Moroccan embassy, filled in the paperwork, applied for the visa, didn't take the visa free. And I said, Oh, well, we should know enough to do this with the visa or not. So I went ahead and booked a hotel for a couple of nights in Morocco, and uh, we never heard anything from the visa. So we then came along and passed. So on the hotel, took the money out of my account, and then the bank sent me a note saying they've been fraudulent activity on my account, and I had to ring them. So I needed some some cash because a giri, which is currency in Mauritania, is hard to get outside of Mauritania. So, but. Uh, I want to try and transfer my wife some money by Western Union, so she's got Western Union cash it and we wouldn't go through. So uh, you know, my wife bought me a local SIM card and enough credit to do it and seen a friend of hers and where I work colleague put the international credit onto the phone so I could ring the bank. They, reactivated my card so I could do with it so it was easy enough so you could get money then transfer a little bit at a time what we needed so we had some to the big market 
absolute near. Uh, Centre market, as I mentioned before, and BMD, which is like right the capital, big market, restaurants and cafes. Things there, uh, which we sample a few cafes. Now we did find one nice place to eat called Crispy Chicken, which obviously we do chicken, we do burgers, and we went in there quite a few times, getting eating in or taking out. Enjoyed that. Yeah. What else was it? Um, like nothing really exciting happened. Yeah, normal things I think some you try and get a week mistakes or um, what have you. And um, the first strain is like uh, well, it's not talking to Nigerian, but she lives where like some talk built from Togo. There's so talk to some of the lads there and get to know them. And um, you know, doing a couple of odd jobs in the room and what have you for her. What she needed. Well, sometimes I went to school with her, sometimes I didn't. What well, I was feeling like or what she was teaching, so... Like, but we found a couple of... Well, it's corner shops, little shop, corner shops all over there, so she had about three or four around her, so... We go in some of them, and then I went in the one that he went out of the gate right, that they like lay by thing and turn left so he used to use that one quite a lot because uh, it's all cigarettes and things in there which by the way the cigarettes are a hell of a lot cheaper than they are here you'd be shocked if I tell you the price of them nah a pound or there were anything between a pound and two pound a pack there so that was okay. The food wise, I ate a lot of chicken there and meat, which is beef. Because I can't eat fish. Myself, I'm allergic to it, so. Yeah, so I'm quite well on rice and pasta and stuff. I did some cooking while I was there, but not a lot. I did some, obviously did normal like housework with my wife things together and stuff like that. I kept getting bitten by mosquitoes but luckily I don't think I've got malaria but one or two days I did feel a bit rough but I never told the wife that. Well I think she knew anyway. Very hot over there, we had no rain at all. Exit right ahead. There was odd times with the breeze, you know, I said it was cold, I said it's not, I said it, it's nice, it's pleasant, it's warm. But obviously she's, it's African temperatures, not British ones. And, that, and then we met a couple of nights, <coughs> got on with, and one of them, we were just, we didn't know him before. We just called in. Because he took a laptop right. over, but he developed a fault. And we went somewhere and asked him if he'd do what, what we're doing. And he's looking at it. He said, Yeah, I'm looking at him. But we're friends with him actually. So he came out to where she lived, a room and what have you. And then she that up and friends with him she was advice and things like that he was very easy going relaxed and I think he'd been to England before so I took him for a bit and then we uh, 
night and uh, set on the day of leaving. My friend to work and all, she got back, she brought me back some, some food, which wasn't easy to get because Ramadan had started then. I've been in a Muslim country and I saw me up together. I checked and got everything, you know, goodbyes and what have you, and she rung the, she'd already rung the, sorry, I'll give the computer up. Um, Traced him, he said, Yeah, he said, I've got no problem with me to the airport. So we went up to the Go straight. airport, which if you've seen the short video shared on Facebook or it's on my wife's channel anyway. The left and took us to the airport in plenty of time. The airport talked for a bit because they went to check in. I checked in. I was talking to my wife and said, oh, I said, yeah, has he left you here? She said, no. No, he's gone in the mosque. I said, all right, so... After 100 I yards, waited, turn left. There was no free Wi-Fi in the airport. They hadn't got any data turn left on the SIM. Well, given the SIM, the wife was just there anyway, but there was no data left. The airline had turn emailed left. me, said there was a delay in the flight. Fair enough, so it was supposed to take off about half past five, but we put the take off back to around 7, 7 pm. Oh, yeah, I thought then. Then it was the shortest flight down to Concrete, Guinea Concrete, lay over to the south of where we were, so I sat in the plane there for about an hour and a half before it took off again. Then I had a smooth flight in Charlie Gall. Obviously, with it being delayed, it was late in Charles Gall, but didn't miss the connecting flight, so we got back into Charles Gall. I went to use my card in Starbucks, which is departure there, Terminal 2E. So I went and Went in there, put my card in. Okay. Card wouldn't work, so I just said, oh, I'll try it. And she tried it a few different ways, and no, it wouldn't work, so then I left. I just went to the side, tried to talk to the bank on the app. Uh, the lady on, then a fella come and tapped me on the shoulder and said, oh, the lady wants word with you at the counter. So I went to the counter. Give me the copy. I can't pay for it. I said, oh, it's fine. Have it as a gift, so. But then the bank, talking to somebody on live chat on the bank now, because I can use my phone as if in England when I'm in France with the company I'm with, which is Libara. By the way, I'm with mobile when I'm on. And then did that and told me my, when they'd blocked my card Keep left. they blocked After the pin as well yards, turn but the left. lady I spoke to had forgotten to unblock the pin so I, I just went to the cash machine did the pin unblocked it changed the pin obviously and not that that then I went back to Starbucks and yeah okay, and caught you and I said no it was a gift okay. I said oh you were very much so I had that then I got on the plane and tried to go when I went through like where you Cross you know when you go through and you wait to board and then you have to scan your board and pass on a thing and all different flashing lights came up I said it was a problem he said no he said there's no problem he just said there's a big change of plane since you booked your flight and you just got a different seat number, that's all, so... Uh, what have I done? So, I got on the plane, well, after this, to Manchester, went, had a long Across walk round from where Second you were, exit. from where the plane parked, 
through to rivals, went through customs, etc. without the shoe. Went round to the railway Exit. station. I booked my ticket. After 100 yards, to turn left. Back to Red Car. Right on the train. Turn left. Well, the train went from the airport to uh, Manchester to the village. Your destination. Then I had to self transfer up to Victoria. Well, it's supposed to be about a 12 minute walk, but I got lost. Obviously, I'm not familiar with Manchester and it's like amazing some areas. So I walked round, went round and then you look back at the railway station. And uh, that, uh, tighten time. So, eventually there was a free bus that runs around Manchester Route 2. Uh, said, oh, can you let me know where Victoria is? So he said, yeah. So I went up to Victoria, got off the bus, went across the little road, into the station. Now, platform 4 is opposite side, so I had to like, go up the foot, up the footbridge with a case. I was going, a uh, fella sat up in the lift, he said, what, what's in there, where are you going to? I said, oh, platform four, he said, oh, get in here, just down, and they just shut the doors on the train, but they let me on, so I made it on that train with a minute to spare, I had a cup of tea and something to wait on the train, coming back in direct, because it was a straight running direct there, just a couple of stops and I'll change the train to help me. The mate picked us up and then I got home safely, arrested for a day or two and then that's it so thanks for watching and putting up with my ramblings and hope to see you again soon. Please like, share and subscribe and bye for now. Bye bye.